How to Train Your Dragon 3. Does it live up to the first two films? You ready to give our rating? Yes. All right. Rating coming in. Three, two, one. See, see it. it. See it. See it. See it. See it. See it. See it. <laughs> yes, it absolutely does live up to the first two films. This now solidifies this series as one of my all-time favorite trilogies. It is absolutely fantastic. So How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World. This film tells the story of Hiccup and Toothless on the search for the hidden world of the dragons so the dragons can live in peace and sanctuary along with, as Hiccup wants to do, along with the humans living there. So what this film, my favorite aspect of this film might not be other people's favorite aspect, but my favorite aspect is the fact that to tell the story that they want to tell in this film, they actually pare down the action. Mm -hmm. So this film is about Hiccup and Toothless on their journey to becoming, essentially starting families and leaving their legacy behind in the world. Yeah. And so that sort of story that they want to tell calls for what I feel like is less action and a much more personal touch to the storytelling. I agree. So one of my favorite aspects of this film is the fact that Hiccup is the one that wants to get married to Esther, and Esther is kind of the one that's like, yeah, we ain't ready for that guy. You just, you just, <laughs> you just back up. And Hiccup also finds his significant other in, I believe it's the, it's either the night, it's the light Are fury. you talking about Toothless? You said Hiccup again. Toothless, Toothless finds his counterpart, and he's trying to, you know, move forward with her, and it's kind of interesting to see that it's like the beginning for Toothless and then Hiccup is kind of like in the midst of mm -hmm. the relationship. So it's kind of cool. So the story that is told in this is far more personal than it's been in the previous films. The previous yeah. films, while still being personal, this is the one that, for me, hit the closest to home. Yeah. For me. Mm. It's, it's, it's softy. So essentially Hiccup and Toothless, it's not that they're on the run. Well, they're kind of on the run, but they're on the run looking for the hidden world. While this other dragon hunter, who has been a Night Fury hunter, he thought he's killed all the Night Furies. And then he sees uh, Hiccup's uh, Toothless, and he goes, I need to kill that Night Fury. It's the last yeah. one alive, and I need to go get it. So essentially, Hiccup and Toothless and the village of Burke is on the run from this guy while he's trying to hunt them down. Mm. Uh, what are some of the things that you really liked about this film? It was so touching. It Very was, sweet. The The drive of the movie was spectacular. Uh, I really just enjoyed Toothless and Hiccup's character. Once again, their relationship is just so fun to watch and fun mm -hmm. to be around that it just drove the movie. And it was the reason why I was there was for that relationship. And they, they did it again with the amazing, you know, what do you, whatever you call it. But they were just on point. Yeah. I think... I think through all of the movies, um, like you were saying, this one really hits close to home, and it's it's one of those that really speaks out to adults, and I think that adults could really appreciate this film. Yeah, I think the series in general is more geared towards adults, but because it's animated, it's supposed to be a kid's film, but I think one of the reasons why the films haven't taken off the way they have at the box office, say like maybe the Toy Story franchise or maybe some of the Pixar's films, is the fact that these films are so adult themed mm -hmm. that all the films revolve around themes of growing up yeah and so a lot of the themes and the things that resonate with us might not resonate with a younger audience preteens mm -hmm. so to speak but for the adult crowd i believe the adult like the screening we went to packed with adults mm -hmm. yes there was families there but there were a lot of older people in the audience and i feel like older people appreciate this series more than other animated series yeah, I think that this one is really made for, like you were saying, it's just one of those that almost touches adults more than it touches kids. Like, kids like the film, and when you talk to children about this film, they really like it, but you can tell that they're not quite grasping the big picture of it. Yeah. So, like, as adults, seeing this from our lens and having experienced a lot of the things that they go through in all of the film, all of those layers, it really, like, it, it hits us all in the feels. Yeah. Hits uh, us in the field. What was your favorite scene? I had a lot of favorite scenes, but I think my favorite one was when Toothless was trying to talk to the Night Fury, and he's like pouncing around her, trying to get her attention. And Light Fury, I think it's the Light Fury. The Light Fury. What did he's I say? He's the Night Fury. Oh, 
he's like trying to get her attention and it's super cute and hiccups like in the background like telling him how to dance and he's like Whoa. it's yeah. in the it's in the trailer but it's that's yeah, really funny it's the whole super scene cute. it's super cute yeah the whole scene's really funny my favorite scene one my just outright favorite scene is the very last scene of the movie that's the scene that made me cry a little bit i had a tear cry like I actual, cried. T- I, actual a tears. tear rolled down i had to wipe actual it away tears yeah i had to wipe it away super touching go away tear uh and then tear. before that there's a scene in towards the end i'm not gonna give the context but a character says save him and that particular moment was another one of the ones that really hit me it's that moment that the film built up to usually films build up to these big action moments this film was building up to that one particular moment that line and when that line is said it really it hit me really really hard when that line yeah. was said it's like that's what this film has been doing yeah and i think it's the reason why the action is pared down in this film because it's not about conquering obstacles it's about the things that we need to do to move on and move forward in our own personal lives. And this film was far more personal than the other ones. I th- it's weird too, because like the first one came out so many years ago, the first, second, and then this one kind of chronicles like our growth mm-hmm. in our life. It's our life so different from when the first one came out, obviously. And from this one and watching, going back and watching the first one, second and the third, it's like, you experience those things as adults and you experience all of the ones in all of the films and it just it touches you in a different way that you know any other kids movies would like Mm -hmm. kids movies are usually wrapped around this big picture this bigger picture this bigger you know um theme lesson this one didn't really seem like it was a lesson it seemed like it was like this is just kind of how life is yeah it wasn't there was no lesson there was no underlying lesson that you needed to pay attention to it was just a great story about growing up like yeah, from that, how to train your dragon to how to train your dragon th- three just how to grow up yeah each film tackles a different stage in someone's life and that's why i think the films are geared more towards adults than kids because mm-hmm. a lot of those themes are just gonna go over kids heads totally whereas like you said a lot of films are based around lessons whereas how to train dragons around the themes of growing up and the different stages of life we need to go through. Mm-hmm. So, is there anything about this film that you didn't like? I don't think so. I mean, I did think that at some points it was kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that there wasn't a lot of action, so I think that's going to push a lot of people off. And I kind of did miss the action and the big, bigger sequences and the bigger dragons. But overall, I don't think there was a whole lot that I didn't, that I missed or I didn't like or yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, and to your point, because it is a far more personal story, the action is pared back quite a bit. Yeah. There is no culmination in a giant battle. There is a battle sequence. There is a couple of fight sequences in this film. They are nothing like they are on the scale of the first two films. Right. And I think part of that is one, not that I had an issue with this, but the villain in this film is, I don't want to say he's forgettable, but he's kind of forgettable. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's not hes not a standout. He's a good foil for Hiccup and Toothless's journey in this film. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's there to push their relationship forward instead of being his own well-rounded character. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I have a problem with that because the series has always been Hiccup and Toothless. Right. So the fact that the villain is geared around towards their growth I was okay with. I think some people are going to have a problem with that. Right. Outside of that, I mean, that's pretty much the only thing. Like you said, I think because it does get a little slow in the middle because of the themes of the film, Mm -hmm. that the themes take center stage far more over the... The themes come at the expense of what you say is fun action beats. Right. So I think some people also have a problem with that, at least a younger audience. I think kids might get a little restless watching this one. Mm Mm-hmm. I think so, too. There's not a lot of, like, big action sequences. It just kind of is a story about his life. So, yeah, I understand that. So, all right. That's it for me. That's it for me. All right. Absolutely loved this film. This franchise is amazing. It really is. I would be completely okay if this is the last one. I don't need How to Train Your Dragon 4. Mm. They've wrapped it up in a pretty little bow. I felt like this was a perfect ending to this series. Yeah. There'll probably be a TV series. I know they've been doing TV. They've already had one. 
yeah, that's, I'm sure they'll probably continue with that. Yeah. But anyways, uh, that is it for us. We have more reviews coming. We had a bunch that we did earlier in the week. We had Alita, Happy Death Day 2, and Isn't It Romantic? I would like to do Fighting With My Family. Maybe so that might week. be So that might be uh, coming up. All right. But if you liked this video, like and subscribe. Uh, we have much more coming. So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time, guys.